Okay, so a couple months ago, I released a video on how to increase your track count in Ableton Live Lite, but I was only using MIDI tracks because I produce electronic music and so I just need samplers, synths, that kind of stuff. But some of you have been asking, can you do this with audio as well? Hence today's video. So there's two methods and the one I'm going to be talking about today is as follows. Basically, we're going to have four secondary Ableton projects, each with its own eight tracks of audio, and each of those will stream its audio into one single master kind of project. So that that master project has like four tracks, and each of those four tracks is actually a full Ableton project. So it's actually eight tracks. So that's four times eight, 32 tracks into your master project, right? Just so we're clear on how this works, you're gonna need to install a driver, something that allows you to stream audio from one application to another. And uh, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna use one called AC Link Pro. But don't worry if you're on Mac, there are definitely alternatives for Mac as well. So, good. So, first thing, you're gonna need to install that driver. In the case of AC Link Pro, it used to be payware, but now it has been re released as freeware. So, you're gonna install the driver. I'm going to leave a link in the description to download it. The installation is pretty straightforward. Double click on the installer and say yes, yes, yes. But then you also have a small utility, which is going to work as... Uh, it's basically going to authorize the driver, right? Because again, it used to be payware, so you would need to purchase a license. Now it being re-released as freeware, you have this small utility which will patch the license, so to speak. 100% legal. Um, you can check out the web page. I'm going to link to it. Good. Now that you have the driver installed, um, let's set up some things in Ableton. So the first project you're going to open is going to be a blank project. In my case, <laughs> I want you guys to actually hear what I'm saying, right? So um, I have used up one track already um, for my vocals, but in your case, it's going to be a completely clean slate. Let's set some things up. So I'm going to open my preferences. And the first thing you need to set up is this option right here, allow multiple instances by default it's going to be set to off so you're going to have to switch it to on and it's necessary because again we're going to need to create four separate projects running at the same time so we're going to need to enable this and then down here under audio under audio device you're going to choose ac link pro so not your usual ac driver um, if like me you don't have any external sound card you probably have ac for all to get those low latencies if you have an external sound card, then probably it came with its own drivers, which you hopefully installed, but you're going to choose neither one of those. We're going to go with ACO Link Pro. And then we're going to need to select or rather deselect some inputs and outputs. Now, Ableton Live Lite only allows for eight mono inputs or four stereo inputs and eight mono or four stereo outputs. So right here, that's what we're going to select, right? Um, thanks to ACO Link Pro being installed, we could actually use up to 64 inputs um, and outputs, but you know, we're bound by Ableton Live Live to just eight, which is, you know, it's plenty if you can combine them, as I was mentioning before. So these basically are virtual inputs and outputs. So they are the inputs that Ableton sees and the outputs that Ableton sees, not necessarily your physical ones. So in my case, for instance, I don't have an external sound card, right? So I only have um, a mini jack in and a mini jack out. So I actually only have, well, I guess it's stereo. So it counts as two mono inputs and two mono outputs physically. But virtually inside of Ableton, I can have up to eight. So that's what we want to select. Um, if upon opening this, you see that all of these are yellow, you can just click on them to deselect everything. And if none of these are selected, you can just click and make them yellow so enable them but you want to make sure you have eight inputs and uh, of course eight outputs as well right that being done let's set up ac link pro as well you're going to go down here to your system tray and you're going to open up ac link pros control panel now this might look a little bit intimidating but please don't worry for the purposes of today's video we can actually ignore 90 percent of this okay there's just a couple of things you need to do. And the first one being you need to select your driver. So remember how in Ableton we chose AC Link Pro? Well, within AC Link Pro, we can then choose the actual driver we're going to use. 
just click on pick driver and you're gonna see a list of all the ACO drivers installed on your machine. In my case, I just have ACO for all, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. Then what you need to do is you need to enable this option right here. It's gonna be red by default, which means not active. And you need to enable multi-clients the same way you enabled multiple instances on Ableton before. Same principle. And then let's have a look at these routing options here. Now, good news is you don't need to worry about the network rows down here. These are useful if you want to work remotely over the internet, over a network rather, I should say, between several PCs. So very cool to have that option. We don't really need it today. Also, don't worry about this connection here and this row, I should say, down here at all. This is basically what allows you to combine your desktop audio, so you know, a YouTube video maybe, or a song on Spotify that you have open in the browser, with audio from your DAW, so Ableton in this case, and have it be recorded by a third application, like maybe OBS, like I'm doing right now, for streaming or for recording. So nothing really need to do today for the purposes of this video. So ignore this row as well. And the first row you can ignore as well. This is the one where actually your desktop audio resides. So again, YouTube videos, Spotify, whatever. Oh, uh, we don't need it today. Forget about this. So basically, of all of this panel here, we just need to worry about these three central rows, which is great. So explanation is going to be very easy right here where it says ace your driver in. Those are your actual physical inputs. So in my case, there's just one stereo input. That's all I see. If you have an external sound card with maybe four inputs, then you're going to see four entries here. And if you're lucky enough to have one with eight inputs, well, you're going to see eight entries here. Easy as that. And then we have the virtual inputs of our DAW. Remember the ones we said before? These ones, those are our virtual inputs. Right below that, we have our virtual outputs. That's it. Now, we don't need to make any connection here, really. It's, we can just leave things the way they are, and we're actually good to go. And the good news is that this is kind of set and forget. So you just need to do it one time, and then what you could do is you could save your profile here, you know, give it some meaningful name, and then you can load it up next time. But it will actually be loaded up automatically. So now that we've made all the settings we need, we can go ahead so again, we want to use Ableton Live Light to its fullest. So we're going to create four audio tracks in total and select four pairs of stereo inputs. All we can do, right? Now, again, I'm using up one, two for my voice to be recorded as well. But in your case, it would be just like the other tracks, nothing going through there. What you want to do is you want to set the monitoring option here to input so that it will play back whatever audio you send there. Good. The idea now is that we create four separate projects with eight tracks each and then send each of those to its own track in this project, which is going to be our main project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to open up Live Lights. And since we selected the Allow Multiple Instances option, it will create a new window and it will have its own AC Link Pro control panel. Now, there's one last thing we need to set here, and it's the Route to AC In option. And that is the secret. That is what allows this new project to feed into the first one we created. So, enable that option. And then if you want to just import some audio files without recording your own, you don't need to do anything else. If you want to record your own audio files, then you need to connect your physical inputs to the virtual inputs inside of Ableton. So it's as easy as clicking on, in this case, the first input and dragging it into the first virtual input. And then if you click on the connection, like I just did, you can deactivate it. So you would connect all your physical inputs to your virtual inputs. If you had four, you would connect three and four as well, however many you have. And then you can close this and forget about it, right? So let's create, let's max out the tracks we have at our disposal, right? Let's create eight tracks. And let's suppose that this project we wanted to devote to our drums, right? So if I had an eight channel audio interface to record drums, here's how I would do it. 
I would uh, have my kick on the first track, the snare on the second one. Three and four would be for the toms, you know, rack tom and floor tom. And then I would have uh, a stereo track, inputs five and six as a stereo pair for my overheads. And then I would probably reserve seven and eight for my room. So we don't even need tracks seven and eight here because we have already used up all of our available inputs with a pretty standard and I would say very effective drum recording scenario. So you can now record your drums, have all of your tracks lined up nicely here in the arrangement view. Each track has its own slider for volume. You can set the panning as well. You can send it to your master effects here, reverb, and delay. And on each track, you could have an equalizer, a compressor, some saturation maybe, whatever you wanted to. And all of this go to the master track. You could even have a master chain on the master track. So you have all the flexibility you need. And then this master track will be sent. I'm gonna set this to three, four. And that means that it will stream all of this audio out through channels three and four, which are the ones that we have set track number two in our master project to receive audio from. So if I were to play back my drum tracks here, they would occupy one single track in my master project. How cool is that? Now, suppose we had some guitar to record as well. What we would do is, there we go, open up a new instance of Ableton Live Lite and uh, its own separate ACO Link Pro panel as well. Again, we would connect the physical inputs, the virtual inputs. Good. See, notice how the route to ACL in option is enabled automatically since we previously enabled it. So we don't even need to worry about that. We can close this. We can create our setup. And again, I'm just going to create eight tracks to show you how many we can actually use. But maybe you just have two guitar tracks. No problem. Just use two. So you might have, say, um, let's say you have three guitarists. So you could have your first guitarist play a rhythm part on your first input. Maybe you have a second guitarist who can play a second rhythm part, record those two at the same time, as well as the bass. Maybe you have a bass player on the third input and maybe even a lead. So, you know, playing a solo. So you could record those four people at the same time. If you have four inputs on your actual sound card, if you only have two, you can record two people at the same time. But regardless, you will end up with two rhythm parts, a bass part, a solo part. Maybe on five and six, you could have some acoustics and maybe on seven and eight, you could double track those rhythm parts. I don't know, I'm just making up a scenario here. The important thing is that you can have up to eight guitar tracks. In this project, again, you can do your tracks uh, with faders, panning, master effects, EQ compression, whatever. And then on your master track here, you would make sure that the output goes to channels five and six, which in our master project would be the input to track three. So all of your guitars would be on this single track in your master project. And then you also have track four, which you could maybe reserve for vocals. So again, you would just open up a new Ableton project, record all your vocals there. And then on the master bus, you would make sure to send all of that audio to channels seven and eight which are the ones track four is getting its audio from. Brilliant. And again, in my case, I have used up the first track, but you would have that option available to you as well. So maybe if you have an external synthesizer or some kind of keyboard, you could record your eight separate keyboard tracks into track number one. So each of these four tracks actually contains eight tracks of audio. And, you know, I, I just love it because it's a very clean approach. And we have only used up four of our available tracks here. We could actually add four new tracks and maybe make them MIDI tracks. And if you've watched my previous video, that means you have hundreds new tracks available to you. So huge amount of possibilities there. Now, one last thing, um, and the smartest people watching this may have realized this since a while back and maybe are waiting for me to explain this, but we have a little problem because yes, the audio stream is set up nicely, but the playback is not synchronized, right? So if I were on say my drum project here and I press play here, it would start the playback of those drums but not of, say, my guitars. So I would need to press play on the guitars project as well, but they would be terribly out of sync. So not very nice to listen to or useful for mixing, right? Thankfully, 
there is a super easy solution to this that doesn't require any additional software and it's called Ableton Link and it's built into Ableton already. So you just need to click on the link button for each of your projects. Oops. Okay, apparently I've linked them all together. And as you can see, they are synchronized. So if I press play, playback of this project started, but if I opened another project, that would be playing as well, and the third one too. And if I press stop on either one of those, it would stop playback on all projects. Very nice. Great. So that being said, I hope this video was useful to you. And if you have any more questions, leave me a comment. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Right. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.